Good morning, students. Today I am going to revise chapter number six, Manufacturing Industries from Geography. And students, in my previous explanation, as I told you, industries are very important for us, and it is playing very important role to complete the needs and requirement of every people for every day and also for different kind of industries which are located in India and all over the world. So students, first of all, we have to understand that what is manufacturing? It means production of goods and services in large quantities after processing from raw materials to more valuable products is called manufacturing. Okay? And manufacturing sector is the backbone of economic development and also it is very helpful for the economic strength of a country which is measuring by the development of manufacturing industries. Okay? And export of manufactured goods expands trade and commerce and also helps to earn valuable foreign exchange. All right. And countries that transform their raw materials into a wide variety of furnished goods of high value are prosperous. And also India's prosperity lies in increasing and diversifying its manufacturing industries as quickly as possible. All right. After that, location of industries. So students, as I told you in my previous explanation that location of industries is influenced by several factors such as availability of raw material, labor, capital, power and market and also the key decision is the least cost for every materials whatever used by the industries. Okay? So students, after that, on the basis of different kinds of industries, industries may be classified on various bases, which are I am going to discuss with you, in which number one is agro-based industries. And these industries obtain raw materials from the agriculture sector. After that, mineral-based industries and these industries using raw materials are minerals and metals. And after that, uh, so students, agro-based and mineral-based industries are the example of on the basis of source of raw material used and after that next one is according to their main role in which basic or key industries so students these industries supply their products as raw materials to manufacture other goods such as iron and steel industry and next one is consumer industries. So, these industries produce goods for direct consumption such as cosmetics, utensils, etc. Alright. After that, next is on the basis of capital investment in which a small scale industries, manufacturing enterprises in which investment 
in plant and machinery is more than rupees 25 lakh but does not exceed rupees 5 crore are termed as a small scale industries all right after that large scale industries in which manufacturing enterprises invest in plant and machineries exceed rupees 10 crore are termed as large scale industry okay after that next one is on the basis of ownership so in which number one is public sector industries and these are government owned and operated industries such as bale sale etc and uh, next is private sector industries so these are privately owned and operated industries such as tesco or tata iron steel company bajaj etc all right after that joint sector so these industries are run by both central and state government and a privately owned company such as oil india limited it means these industries are working with the help of each other all right after that next is cooperative industries so these are owned by producers and suppliers of raw materials and workers or both such as uh, sugar industry in maharashtra all right understood after that next one is based on the bulk and weight of raw material and finished goods in which there are two types of industry number one is heavy industries and these industries are capital intensive using heavy and large equipment or produce heavy or large products okay after that light industries so these industries are less capital intensive and manufacture goods for consumers and not for intermediate consumption okay after that students as i told you in my previous explanation that industries based on agriculture raw material are referred to as agro based industries like cotton jute silk sugar edible oil etc are agro based industry okay and these industries have proved that agriculture and industry move hand in hand so now i am going to discuss with you some of the important agro based industries of india and in which number 1 is textile industry so students this industry contributes significantly to industrial production for employment generation for foreign exchange earnings and for increasing gdp so students it is the second largest industry after agriculture and complete in the value chain so some of the important textile industries are as follows in which number 1 is cotton textile so students in our country there were nearly 1946 cotton and human made fiber textile mills and on the basis of 30 november 2011 about 80% of these are in the private sector and rest are in public and cooperative sectors all right 
after that next one is jute textiles so students india is the largest producer of the raw jute and jute goods and stands at second place as an exporter after bangladesh okay and uh, mostly jute mills are located in west bengal near hugli area okay after that next one is sugar industry so india stands second as a world producer of sugar and occupies the first place in the production of gold and khandasari all right and according to the 2010 and 11 there were over 662 sugar mills in india located in uttar pradesh bihar maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu andhra pradesh gujarat punjab haryana and madhya pradesh all right after that next industry which is using minerals and metals as raw materials are called mineral based industries so some of the important industries of this category are which i am going to discuss with you in which number 1 is iron and steel industry so students the iron and steel industry is the base of all industries and it provides all types of machineries to run other industries and it is also known as a heavy industry okay after that next is aluminum smelting industries so aluminum smelting in the second most important metallurgical industry of india and it is used to manufacture aircrafts utensils and wires all right after that chemical industries so these chemical industries contribute approximately 3% of the gdp of our country and it is the third largest in asia and occupies the 12th place in the world in terms of its size okay after that fertilizer industries so students the fertilizer industry produces various kinds of fertilizers such as nitrogenous fertilizers phosphatic fertilizers and dye ammonium phosphate or dap and complex fertilizers understood after that cement industry so students india produces a variety of cement and is the second largest in the world and the first cement plant in india was set up in chennai in 1904 and there are 188 large and 365 mini cement plants in india according to the may 2017 data okay after that automobile industry so this industry produces trucks buses cars motorcycles scooters three wheelers and multi utility vehicles are manufactured in india at various centers all right so students the first successful textile mill was established in mumbai in 1854 and the two world wars were fought in europe india 
was a British colony that time, and there was a demand for cloth in UK. Hence, they gave a boost to the development of the cotton textile industry in India. Okay. After that, your next point is that the first jute mill was set up near Kolkata in. Eighteen fifty nine at Rishra, and after partition in nineteen forty seven, the jute mills remained in India, but three fourth of the jute producing area went to Bangladesh. All right, okay. And students above industry, which uh, I had discussed to you. you know very well that all these have some challenges due to the modernization etc so you have to prepare the challenges and problem related to above industries okay after that next one is information technology industry and electronic industries of india so students information technology and electronic industry includes a large range of products like transistors television telephones cellular telecom pagers telephone exchange radars computer etc and bangalore is considered to be the electronic capital of india all right so students as i told you above that industries contribute significantly to india's economic growth and development but they are also important sources of different kind of pollutions and basically industries are responsible for four types of pollution in which number 1 is air pollution number 2 is water pollution number 3 is thermal pollution and number 4 is noise pollution so students you have to read and learn about all kind of pollution and how we can reduce it so i am going to discuss with you some measures in which we can control of environmental degradation so in this, uh, students every liter of waste water whatever discharged by our industry pollutes eight times the quantity of fresh water okay so here is some suggestion in which we can minimize the pollution so number 1 is minimizing use water for processing by reusing and recycling it in two or more successive stages and number 2 is harvesting of rain water to meet water requirements and number 3 is treating hot water and effluents before releasing them in rivers and ponds and treatment of industrial effluents can be done in three phases in which number 1 is primary treatment by mechanical means and this involve screening grinding and flocculation and sedimentation okay and secondary treatment by biological process and third is by biological chemical and physical process and this involve recycling of waste water okay and students national thermal power corporation or ntpc is an iso environment management system ems certified company and uh, it works on a proactive approach 
for preserving natural environment and resources and also it works towards reducing environmental pollution through ash pond management ash water recycling system and liquid waste management and uh, student this is all about the manufacturing industries but you have to prepare and learn exercises which is given in your book and you have to read and learn all the points very carefully for your examination so listen my lecture very carefully and anywhere you if you have any doubt then please contact me or consult me okay thank you and have a nice day